when people say, well, what should I do? What should I do as a micro enterprise? So we've already said that the micro enterprise can be an activity that normally is thought of in a big business, but it has to be sized differently. And it has to be sized smaller so that it can do the job of serving your needs, not the other way around where you're serving the needs of the enterprise. So what are some ways that you can be financially independent sooner, retire earlier, and better? Are well, you talking about micro enterprises, hon? Well, we made a video where we talked about how we achieved our financial independence very early in our, in our 20s. We touched on it's summer, it's hot, this isn't sweat, it's a water fountain. But uh, we, we touched on the idea of micro enterprise. There's a lot of people in this space that do real estate and a lot of people do index funds. And one of the ideas was that the label FIRE, financial independence, retire early, probably should, should have the re, retire early part, is not so accurate because especially uh, those that do this early, and there's, you see it's a fad now, there's a, there's a lot of videos about retire 30 you know these people nobody's really retired they're working so but I think that the distinction that we want to make is that the way that we have organized our lives is in such a way that we parallel the lives of those that have fired and in what way is that true well I've, I've been doing this since my 20s so it's challenging for me to explain how I didn't, for example, retire from a job because I can't really say I retired from a job because I only worked a, a few jobs out of high school and you know, then I went into my own business. So I didn't really retire from a job, although you could technically say that I did retire from a job uh, in the sense that I didn't no longer had to go to a job. And so clearly what we're saying here that is that we also said in a video we made how we retired at 25. When we were young, we, we read the Living the Good Life by Helen and Scott Nearing. And in that book, they at that time, this was way before the internet, remember, so there was no four-hour work week, there was no anything that you see uh, today. So, But that's what was available then, and it was that if you were only working four hours a day, you were living the good life. So if you were, li were living four hours a day, and you had a low-stress life, and you had good health, and you spent your time with your loved ones, then you were living the good life. And if you were spending your time doing as you please, doing the things that you enjoy, you are definitely living the good life. So we took that idea and we weren't interested in farming, which is what they used. They used micro farming, which is just to say it was a small subsistence farming enterprise. It was not an industrial farm, corporate farm. It was. Uh, the subsistence individual farming enterprise which we call micro enterprise so the difference between a side hustle and a micro enterprise is that a side hustle is something that you add to your delayed gratification work schedule okay but a micro enterprise is something you do that enhances your life your financial freedom and your disposable income and your standard of living and it increases those things while at the same time improving your work-life balance and just having a just an amazing life right now instead of having a delayed gratification plan and doing it at a later date so that's the difference the distinction of micro is that it's small enough and it's not just that it's small though small is just part of it the idea is that the enterprise yes it's small but it serves you you don't serve it so the idea behind micro enterprise is as a parallel to the micro subsistence farming that the nearings had could be anything beyond farming it could be any activity that gives you the life 
balance that you want. And you can have that without having to work at something you don't really want to be working at for 20 years first. And so we took that shortcut. We started on a fire program and within a few years into it we, we became disenchanted with it, with the idea I had a conscience stirrup I, I mentioned. And we realized that micro enterprise, because I had ideas of building my business and I had started to build my business. At that time I was growing my business before I had this, you know, the light bulb went off. I had started growing and increasing my business. And I had started traveling out of town and I was building these business and I was going to, and I was making all this money. And a little voice within smacked me over the head and said, this is the way to go, that's not the way to go. And so I'm glad for that. I'm glad that I had the realization and I uh, came up with the micro enterprise. So the micro enterprise serves you and your needs. people say well what should I do what should I do as a micro enterprise so we've already said that the micro enterprise can be an activity that normally is thought of in a big business but it has to be sized differently and it has to be sized smaller so that it can do the job of serving your needs not the other way around where you're serving the needs of the enterprise and so what are your needs? So it starts off with you making a list of what your ideal life is like. What is your ideal life? So everyone's ideal life is going to be a little different, somewhat the same, but a little different. We all pretty much have ten fingers and two eyes and a, two ears, but we all have different preferences, different things that we like to spend our time doing and such. So we need to be making a list of our ideal life as it relates to what do we enjoy doing. And I'm not saying what do we enjoy doing in a sort of um, blue sky way of saying, uh, gee, I like sleeping, so I, is there a way to make money sleeping? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that, uh, for example, do you like to be outdoors more than you like to be indoors? Do you like to be tinkering with things more than you like to be talking to people about ideas. Sometimes it can be challenging to be too niche and too specific as far as I only like this and so I have to only do this. Here, here's what I'm trying to say. Okay, for example, there's a lot of work out there that I would not want to be spending eight to ten hours a day doing. However, the beauty of micro enterprise really shines and it really makes one's previous idea of what something was like can be changed. Why? Because you can take something, for example, let's just say cutting lawns, mowing lawns. Maybe you wouldn't want to be mowing lawns 10 hours a day, but all of a sudden if you're mowing lawns two or three hours a day, it's not so bad. Why? Because you do it just long enough to not wear out just right at the spot where you start wearing out. Oh, time to quit. It's not like you're on this hamster wheel where no, you gotta keep going till, you know, 10 hours. It's so it totally changes how our life stresses and how we perceive the time that we're spending one day at a time on this earth and how it affects our disposition in life and how we're enjoying life. That's what I'm talking about, enjoying life. Life becomes much more enjoyable when we figure out how to do these things for a lot less time than what people normally do them. And generally speaking, we're talking about not necessarily selling your time for money. And so that if you are cutting lawns, you wouldn't want to say, go around saying, hey, I cut lawns at $10 an hour. 
So what you'd want to do is figure out, well, how long does it take me to cut lawns and how much do I need to make because I only work, want, want to work four hours a day. So if the idea is, well, I need to make $25 an hour and I want to work four hours a day because $100 a day will give me the life I want, then all of a sudden this becomes uh, doable. It becomes a reality. All of a sudden is, okay, well, I need to get four hours a day worth of work at generally $25 an hour and that will give me the life I want. So in a nutshell, is that, is that a nutshell? <laughs> no, that was not a nutshell. You can see that micro enterprise can be any activity. It can be mowing lawns, it can be cleaning carpets, cleaning houses, painting. It can be whatever you want it to be. It can be doing online work. Again, as long as you're not selling your time for money. I've also mentioned that it's a two-prong approach. The way we were able to make this work wasn't by just working as someone would say, well, you mean working for yourself and not working by the hour. Yes, that's normally how people would refer to it, but that's not the complete picture. The other side of this story is because a lot of people, you can go out and do this and you'll never make it working four hours a day. Why? Because your expenses are too high and because you haven't really focused on, hum, on being a, a piffy, a professional industrious frugalist, which means making an art out of meeting your material needs in an abundant way uh, without, without having to go out and produce more earnings. And so that means you know, having more disposable income and actually increasing your standard of living while actually decreasing the amount of time that you work. And that's a real trick to do. And I'm telling you that we've been spending three decades perfecting the lifestyle. And, you know, if you want some help with this or want to talk about it, join our Facebook group because we go, we talk about that in, in, in the group. But that's the, the way that with the two-prong approach, that's the way that you would achieve. Because in this subject matter, there's a lot of commonality in thinking. You know, there's a lot of people repeating what everybody else is, is doing and saying. And well, I just think that people get really dogmatic because they, when you go to personal finance blogs, they all pretty much say the same thing. You can read five different blogs and they could be five different people and they can, okay, so this guy's got a little bit more in uh, online real estate. And this so guy's you're got a saying the most important thing is to make sure that your micro enterprise serves the, your needs rather than you serve the needs of the micro enterprise. That's so insightful. Well, and it's insightful because it's a complete picture. It's not just part of the picture. It's not just, well, okay, uh, you know, I mean, there's there's people that figure out how to, how to live on $100 a day, and that's fine. But a lot of people, uh, the way that this idea is normally understood is that, well, I know that I could cut back and all that. But I don't want to cut back. I don't want to feel awkward like I have to scrimp and, you know, and I'm talking about not, I'm talking about no austerity, no deprivation, having a system where you have the financial freedom that you, that you want. I mean, I'm not talking about the Lamborghini and the mansion kind of financial freedom. Although if you're at that level, it could be that too, but there's more to it than what is being said out there. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that and you got some insights out of that. I'm eager to share my life with my viewers to let you know because you have all these fancy titles out there like how to retire at 30 or how I retired at 30, but really what's the story behind that headline? And so we're giving you our story behind that headline and we're just doing it little by little and there's a lot of details to it. So thanks for staying with me. You know what to do if you like the video. And if you want to talk more about it, come to the group. <laughs>